This dwells in the realm of truth. Formless dwells in the realm of truth. Nanak has divided the existence into four realms for the purpose of the inward journey. Before I go into this, there is a question. We experience mostly the outer world, including our body, senses and mind. We spend most of our lives and lots of energy fulfilling the needs and desires of the mind and body. Surely we have to do what is needed to maintain the body. However, in the midst of maintaining the body, we get caught up in wants that are fulfilled, though not fully, and others come, come up soon after. It is the cycle that binds us on the outer plane, how to walk away from this cycle. Seems an intelligent question, but what is very important? Intelligence and imagination has to work together. From time to time I keep on giving the hints that I am in the public place, if I have few moments, I write something and post it. How can I, living it to the world, doing things probably more than what you all do on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, yet still I can keep away myself from that, from the world and its affairs. Here the intelligence and the imagination is important. What is that shape does? That while amidst the crowd he can maintain, he can keep himself away from that and yet still do those posts. The post like master is a unique phenomenon, is one of that that was written in a public place while I was waiting for someone. How can that be possible? Imagination and intelligence put together will bring the answer. I have given the hints in the form of honeymoon. You have gone for honeymoon. You are preparing for the prelude of honeymoon. All of a sudden there is a knock at the door. A man comes in with a basket of flowers. Excuse me, sir, manage, manager has sent these flowers for you. You open the door, receive it, close the door immediately after thanking him and start back your process. Again, there is a knock at the door. This time, the fruits man comes. Excuse me, sir, so as to disturb you, the manager has sent the basket of fruits for you. Thank you. Okay, you close the door again. Although there is a no disturbance sign outside, you again start up the process. As you begin the prelude, again a knock comes in. Excuse me, sorry to disturb you, sir. But the manager has sent this bottle of wine for you to celebrate the occasion. Thank you again. And you close the door and start the process. In all that there is something goes on like an undercurrent and these minor disturbances do not really disturb you or take you away from that purpose for which you have gathered. We have so much intensity about this particular physical act but that which concerns with our inner life we cannot remember. I have given the example the Meera the bhajan of Meera. One of the bhajans of Meera, I do not know, uh, she addresses to Krishna what you have done to me. Even if I want to forget you, I cannot forget you. Remain constantly on my mind. You remain constantly on my mind. You are my companion in birth and death. She is not talking about how to remember. She says, what you have done to me that I cannot forget you even for a moment. Every moment you remain, your thoughts, your very countenance, your mischiefs, 
Your gestures remain in front of me constantly. Your words echo into my ears like the dissolving notes of an enchanting melody that constantly enchant me day and night and do not keep me. They keep me awake all the time. Keep me awake and alert in each moment. And you still want to know how to keep away from that. Mira is fulfilling her worldly responsibilities. I fulfill my worldly responsibilities. I gave you many times the other examples about the other incidents that had happened. Aurangzeb, the Mughal emperor, he was vegetarian. And a particular event happened in his life and that was creating a disturbance with him. So he went to his master and asked him what is the solution. The event was one day Aurangzeb dreamt that his sister Jebunisa, who was very intense and deep in her meditation and she was going somewhere and she saw a mystic, a mazu fakir sitting down and chanting loudly, get me a, a mug of water and get the heaven pardon for you. She went and she gave him the water and the mystic blessed him saying that there from now onwards the heaven belongs to you. Means you have gotten a place in the heaven. Aurangzeb dreamt her brother and he saw on the door of the heaven written Zebunisa's Jannat, the heaven of Zebunisa. He got up, he was very jealous, anxious. Whenever he see things like these, he want, why did I not get it? What, what did special Zebunisa did that she got this and I could not get it? So she asked Zebunisa. Zebunisa told him she was afraid and she told him everything as it happened. He went to that mystic. His name was Salmat Ali Salam. He lived on the steps of Jama Masjid in New Delhi, Old Delhi. And he asked him to create the same scene again. Ask for the water and I will bring the water and the heaven will be pardoned for me. I will get the place in the heaven. But mystics are in their own realm. You cannot force anything onto him. You cannot make any commandments onto him. You can make a request. And your request depends on the mystic or the master to fulfill or not to fulfill. My mother keep on asking her father because Sufi Braj Mohan Lal was her father as well as master. Pitaji, father initiate me, but he keep on postponing. So she got one day angry, he said, now I'm not going to ask you to initiate me. If you want, it's okay. If you don't want, that's okay with me. I do not worry about it. So she has the liberty being the daughter of the Sheikh as well, whereas the others do not. You can make simply a request and then wait for the master to respond. So Aurangzeb being the emperor, emperor has an authority that everyone the subject, the mystic was the subject in the kingdom of the emperor. So they have to follow the commandments of the king. But you cannot force anything onto the mystics. They live in their own realms. They live in their own mystical ways. It did not happen. Out of anger, I am giving a command, being the emperor, and you did not follow that. There is a punishment for it. And he ordered his head to be slain. He was to be killed by cutting off his head. As his head was cut off, he walked down the steps of Jama Masjid holding his head in his hand. Then his fellow disciple, Hare Bhare Shah, he said, Salmat, 
stop right there otherwise there will be chaos there will be a turmoil in delhi and it is said when he heard the voice of hare bharesha his fellow disciple fell down there and that is where his shrine is now he mystics are unique kind of awareness is not that he is doing when the existence of god realized that the emperor has done injustice to one of his beloved and killed him it is the existence that takes the revenge aurangzeb did not eat meat as he is going to eat food he pick up the morsel in his hand it turns out to be the meat aurangzeb will put it down he won't eat it although he knows that it is not meat but as he is picking up the morsel in his hand to put in his mouth it is smells like it looks like piece of meat he will put it down it was a serious problem he cannot eat he went to his master hazrat faza muhammad masoom razi allah taala uno and he mentioned of this to his master master said you have done injustice you have killed an innocent master masters are not your possession you cannot impose your commandments on to them you did it and you killed him he is taking revenge from you so whenever you pick up anything that will the morsel to eat that will appear to you to be the meat but one thing is this salmat is my friend there is no enmity between me and him so as long as you will remain in my thoughts salmat will not disturb you i become like your protection my remembrance has become like a protection to you as long as you will remain in my thoughts salmat will not disturb you Aurangzeb wrote in a memoir it is because of Salmat that he remained in the constant company of his master in Sufism this is known as tasawwur-e sheikh tasawwur means remembrance remembrance of his words how can you remember a particular person you can remember your beloved through the acts through the time that you spend in his company but in case of the beloved you have the physical relation the bliss attained out of that you can constantly remember that and in that remembrance what happens the other thoughts do not impede upon you the other desires you are lost in the thoughts of your beloved and you forget about the time and everything how both of you met how both of you held on to the hands of one another and sat hours or he gave you both of you embraced one another or gave a hug and things like these you have to find your own ways and means of remembrance when you met this person what did the first appearance or what did appeal to you the first impression how did the presence came like a desire to him and the love that was knocking at the door it touched your outer periphery and reached to your center an association was formed a constant remembrance of these will keep away from the other thoughts desires and everything in sufism this is called tasawwur e sheikh or shagl e rabta shagl means the countenance the face it happened with hazrat maulana fazl ahmed khan he was the master of sufi lala ji razilla taala uno a man used to come in his company and he has an intense desire he was in love with a woman but the woman was not paying any attention to his love gestures so he came in the company of this sheikh with intense desire that if sheikh does the prayer for me the the love of that woman will materialize for me it was lala ji was in the company the person came it was full moon night 
late in the night the moon was on its full beauty up high in the sky moonlight was falling and was and everything was incandescent in the moonlight Maulana Fazl Ahmed Khan came with eyeliner in his eyes that is a particular kind of eye treatment that is used in India the english equivalent of that is eyeliner or eyelashes he had that in his eyes he has a cap beautiful robe and when he sat down in a particular gesture he looked at the person and said is she more beautiful than me a tawajjo and energy feel flowed towards that person he forgot about that woman and he fell in love with the master life transformed shagla rafta means constantly remembering the face of the master or whatsoever his gesture when he is when you met him or the words that he has spoken to you for the first time remembrance of the first meeting with your beloved is the way to keep away from all that then the outer demands outer desires or all those things will not impede you it is like what had happened in case of honeymoon episode you are doing everything you are opening the door thanking the person collecting the basket of the fruits but constantly the thought of honeymoon is flowing like an undercurrent you cannot keep away from that thought and there is no gap between closing the door opening the door collecting the basket thanking the person putting it down before and closing the door and putting down the basket on the center table and start back your scene then again there is a knock during all these events the thought of the honeymoon remains like an undercurrent you cannot keep away from that thought when love is so intense no matter what you do no matter what you do you engage in the worldly activities nothing can impede if love is on the surface then you will get disturbed and you will ask the questions like this how to move away from that or keep away from those things let your love for the master or for your something that when you see have seen the children lost in their games they are so much absorbed into it that they forget about everything else another example i gave you the house was on the fire and children were locked up in the room playing with their games they are unaware of all that the fire has set the house is on blaze the man the father had gone to the market to pick up when he came the the neighbors have gathered and tried to put off the fire but nothing was happening and he knew the children are inside the room how to get the children out of that he shouted children come out quickly i brought the toys that you had asked me for hearing the name of the toys the children run out of and thus he saved the children so children were so much absorbed in their thoughts in their games that they forgot about the outer world the things like these not happen to you but you think your question is wise no it is not it has been put wisely and also it is important questions like these are important for the sake of the seekers in general so you become the you become the you have become the representative of the seekers the other seekers 
who may not have the courage to put that question, but you have dared to ask a question like this, like this, how on a moment to moment the worldly life and the desires keep us engaged, how to keep away from that and move inwards. Constant remembrance of the Master. Just as Aurangzeb had the problem with Salmat, Salmat was taking revenge for the act that he has done, act of killing an innocent Salmat But he has no enmity with Hazrat Fadha Muhammad Masoom. He told Aurangzeb, as long as you will remain in my thoughts, Salmat will not disturb you. I have no, in the same way, I have no problems with any desires or any worldly activities. I can be in the midst of this, but I am in constant communion with my awareness. Constant commune with that light that has descended into me. And with that, I may be doing things onto the surface. I may be with you, but I am not with you. I may be in the company of someone who has remembered me at that particular moment. I live in my own world, inner world. And there is no animosity between me and the desires or desired nature. So as long as you will remember, remain in my thoughts, in my remembrance, these desires, these thoughts, the world will not disturb you. I gave you the examples, using your intelligence, do whatever is necessary to be done for that. And you will realize that you can be in the world, but the world will not disturb you. You will do everything as if you have done in the honeymoon episode, but the presence of those three people who brought the gifts for you, how can you be angry with those persons who has brought the gift for you, a gift of a flower, flower basket, a flower bouquet, a gift of fruits, a gift of wine for you to celebrate the occasion? How can you be angry with them? But they come like a minor disturbance in the process. But that disturbance, their presence did not create a serious disturbance in you particular process of that, or in particular process of your honeymooning, be in constant honeymoon with your inner self. As long as you are there, no disturbance can ever disturb you. You will just open the door, fulfill that desire just as you open the door, collected the basket, thank the man and go on back into your bedroom. This is the only way. This is the way a disciple he is like a lover. He is in constant love with his innerness. And because of that, nothing disturbs him. When love is so intense, nothing can disturb you at all. Nanak says that these four realms are important for inward journey. Dharma or religion refers to your essential nature. Dharma and its English translation religion does not mean Hinduism, Christianity and, we are, and Islam and things like these. Religion means your inner quality. Jesus says, I am the saltishness in the soul. Soul is the outer realm and saltishness is the inner quality that makes the salt salt. Without you remove that quality of saltishness, the salt will not be salt. So too everything has an inherent quality or its nature and because of that it is known by that name. Religion refers to your essential nature or quality. Gyan or knowledge refers to awareness of that essential nature. So the first realm is Dharmakhand. 
And what is the nature, what is the essential quality of that? What is the essence of religion is your essential nature or prakriti, your subhav, your nature. Then comes the realm of knowledge. And what is the important ingredient of realm of knowledge is awareness. Without awareness, knowledge is meaningless. And in fact, knowledge is awareness. And awareness of what? Awareness of your essential nature. To be aware of that which is, you require modesty, ignominy. To be aware of that which is, because first realm is truth or your essential nature. When you are aware of that, you have entered into the realm of knowledge of Gyan. And with that, when you have known your essential nature, you are aware of it, then what will happen? There is, there is modesty and ignominy. It implies being modest or helpless or empty within realizing your situation. This is my essential nature and I am aware of this. I have to constantly act out of that. I am an awakened. This is my first. The awakening has happened to me. There are my myriads of people who are connected to me through that awakening. My each action and thought, each word that I speak must reflect that light, must reflect in such a way that a single word that I speak must create groups in the consciousness of the person who is listening. This will become, this will bring modesty. This will create a situation that it is, I am simply an instrument. I am simply a flute that is empty within and it is the existence that plays its music through me. This brings ignominy or modesty. It implies being modest or helpless or empty within realizing your situation. And then what comes? Grace descends in you. The moment you are empty within, you have known the realm, your essential nature. You are aware of it, you are modest about it, what will happen? The kripa, the grace will happen. Thus these four realms put together for the inward journey. So the first is such khand, then jnan khand, then lajja khand, then kripa khand. Jnan khand means the, such khand means the realm of truth, where you have to be constantly aware of your essential nature. Then comes the knowledge, Gyankhand, the realm of knowledge. That does not mean how many scriptures you remember, how many sutras. You are walking with your Bible or this Bhagavad Gita in your hand. That does not mean the realm of knowledge. Realm of knowledge means how much of how aware you are moment to moment when a particular circumstance and situation is taking place, are you aware or not? That is the realm of knowledge. And when these two things happen, you experience, you know your essential nature, you are aware of it, then you will be, there will not be arrogance in you, instead there will be ignominy, there will be modesty, you know that I am empty, I am not the doer. I am simply an empty flute and it is hollow inside, it does not have anything of its own. When the existence plays its music, a harmony, a peace, descends, and whosoever listens to it, they are enchanted by these words. Ignominy or modesty comes in it. And the moment these three things happen, the reign of bliss begins to happen. The reign of grace begins to happen. His grace to descend, you have allowed. And these three things help you, make, uh, makes you capable of receiving His grace. 
these are the four stages of the journey and then the fifth comes which is the destination this is the truth the formless dwells in the realm of 